What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Couch Caviar. We are on episode 13 today. I'm super excited we're gonna make a squeeze burger. Now, squeeze burger originates from East Sacramento, from the squeeze in. Also on the side, we're gonna make some salt and vinegar chips because I just have a craving for those today. So without further ado, let's get into it. We're gonna go ahead and get the potato chips started because they're gonna have to soak in a vinegar and water solution for you know anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours, depending on how vinegary you want your end product to be. So we're gonna go ahead, slice them pretty thin on the mandolin. I'll show you guys, so let's get that started right now. Okay guys, so now it's on to the burgers. Today I have some grass finished ground beef. It's a mixture of chuck and sirloin, 80-20. Today we're gonna make some medium rare burgers. So we're gonna make them a little bit bigger uh, than our flat patties, flatter patties, thinner patties. Uh, it's just a different style. But when it comes to buying meat local from local butcher shops, having ground meat, ground beef, like this and eating it medium rare is no different than when you buy a New York steak or ribeye steak or you buy a prime rib roast or whatever and you cook it medium rare because you you know you want to eat the meat uh, medium rare. You want it to be tender. And so this is no different. This comes from the same cow that those other cuts come from. So eating this medium rare is no different than eating a steak. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and form our patties. Okay, so as you can see, we didn't mess around with the patties at all. We just split the mixture into three. We have three big patties, they're about eight ounces each. That's it. All I would suggest to do is to leave these patties on the counter for maybe half an hour to 40 minutes, just so they can come up to room temperature before we cook, because that always leads to a better final product. It's gonna be less stress on the meat proteins because they're gonna be at a closer temperature to the temperature we're gonna be cooking at. We're just gonna put these to the side and we're gonna work on some garnishes. Traditionally, from what I've seen in the research I've done in the videos I've watched, this burger usually has a sliced pickle, tomato, red onion, and lettuce on it. It's pretty basic, and some aioli. We're gonna stay true to the roots of this burger and go ahead and get these garnishes ready. So for this burger, because there's not much cooking involved, I wanna make something. So we're gonna go ahead and make our own mayonnaise. Super simple. If you haven't seen in previous videos of mine, it turns out really good and it's so much better than the stuff you buy in the store. So I'll put the recipe on the screen so I'll probably go through the ingredients pretty quick here, but I highly suggest making your own mayonnaise. Let's get into it. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do, we've had the potato chips soaking in the vinegar and water solution for about 45 minutes to an hour, maybe even an hour and a half now. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna strain the potatoes off. We're gonna try to get rid of as much moisture as we can because remember, oil and water do not mix. Do not try to mix them, especially at temperatures that you're gonna need to require to cook these chips at. So let's go ahead, dry the potatoes off and get them cooking. So just like in my previous video when we made the Juicy Lucy with the animal fries, these, these potato chips are gonna take the same two-step frying process. The first fry that we're gonna do on them is just gonna be to cook the potatoes. 
and then we're gonna let them chill on the side and then we're gonna raise the oil temperature to 425 degrees and we're gonna fry them for a second time. And that second fry is what's gonna make them nice and golden brown and crispy and all the moisture is gonna remove from the potato chips. So let's go ahead and start frying these potato chips off right now. What's up guys? Now we are at the point that I've all that I've been waiting for. We're gonna make the burgers now. And the burgers, if you couldn't tell from the thumbnail here, they have a cheese skirt. Now, if you've never seen a cheese skirt before in a burger, you're not the only one. I stumbled across this and I was blown away. I thought this is absolutely amazing and I need to make this burger because I need to try that. Anyway, so without further ado, I'm talking too much. Let's go ahead and get these burgers cooking and put some skirts on them. You know what, honestly, this could have been one of the most challenging recipes I've done so far. Now, I don't know if it was because of the type of cheese that I had or the amount of oil I had in the pan previous to covering the burgers and cheese or the fat content in the burgers. And most of these recipes for the cheese skirts that I've seen have been on like big flat tops. So there's a lot of area for moisture to go and be get evaporated. Like if you have too much oil, it can just run away. You know, if you put, when you put your ice cubes in the pan, they come out from the sides as well. Having some trouble with the cheese skirts for sure. Um, but I mean, they, they definitely worked out. This one on this side, you know, stayed in the pan the longest. As you can see, it's like super dark, you know, <clears throat> Once cheese burns, not good. That was the first one I did, second, and the last one that I did. Um, salt them in your chips, fantastic. They're great, I mean, this is awesome. Honestly, I would definitely make these again. But let's get into the burgers. Look at this one, look at this one. Like that's a legit, legit skirt action all the way around. Um, if anything, just like setting up the cameras and everything. It's definitely got like a little bit more brittle, but this has got to be a thousand calorie burger, 100%. So much for my medium rare, but that's because, oh, look at that. So cheesy. Mm. This is what I saw too. Some people take the cheese skirt, fold it up and put it on the burger. Let's try that. Damn, this is one good burger. Mm. You know, an acidic pickle is nice because it just cuts through that grease and fat and it's, it's almost a break from the richness. I've been waiting for this. Mm. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I enjoy making these videos so much. I hope you guys enjoy watching them. I just want to say thank you to all my recent subscribers. For anyone else new out there, you know, 
hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, please hit that like button, notification bell. And honestly, if you guys have any comments, any suggestions, any feedback, please leave it down below. I will get back to you, respond to every comment. They mean a lot to me. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay, now is now is for the burgers. Now it's time for the burgers.